The Department of Education has issued new guidance on teaching of certain subjects. And there is a military connection here, which I want to ask you about finally. Objections have been raised to this question being used in schools. Winston Churchill, hero or war criminal? Is there anything wrong with asking that question, at least? Um, that's an interesting question. I, uh, so it sticks in my craw. Um, but maybe I'm, you know, I'm a, I don't know, maybe I'm sort of overly patriotic. And uh, I think there is no harm at all in as part of your study of history to ask yourselves provocative questions as a vehicle for seeing both sides of an argument. And actually, I think that one of the things that is missing uh, in schools and in society more generally now is a willingness to consider something that is uncomfortable and to have the kind of intellectual curiosity to want to see an argument from the other side. So look, if it's a provocative question to encourage people to explore both sides of an argument uh, and to uh, encourage people to think beyond what is the kind of widely held view of one of our nation's greatest leaders, I'm all for it. If it's a vehicle for sort of revisionism and to, revisionism and to try and sort of you know, promote the idea that, that Churchill was something other than what we regard him as, then I'm, I'm sort of uncomfortable with that because that's, that's a political agenda. But, um, but the idea that we should have intellectual curiosity and encourage people to see both sides of the day, debate, that's surely a good thing. Would you argue that far from withdrawing, they are ramping up preparations for an invasion still? That's exactly what I believe to be happening, yes. And are they, do they know that we know? So what's the point? Is this theatre, do you believe, or is this a genuine attempt to, to invade in, in the coming weeks? Look, I, I think that there's um, all sorts of things that could be going on. It could be a big, elaborate hoax to leverage a seat at a diplomatic negotiating table. But my observation would be is that that was achieved when he had 50,000 troops on the Ukrainian border, uh, not 130,000. Um, if you're going to deploy that number of troops with all of the military hardware, with all of the key combat enablers, 50% of your combat air force ships having sailed around from the high north and the Baltic into the Black Sea with thousands of amphibious infantry embarked on board, that's an incredibly expensive way of getting the West's attention or just winding us up. So I, my fear is that that is not what's happened. But believe me, if it is, that's great, because the alternative is that what's about to happen is a major conflict in Europe in which tens of thousands of people could die. And that's why um, the diplomatic effort is key. Uh, and we need to try and make sure that that's given every chance. But um, unfortunately, I fear that um, things are still heading in the wrong direction. Uh, we've spoken to people in Ukraine and Russia over the last uh, week or two weeks, uh, James Heapy, not sympathisers of Putin, although we have spoken to them as well. But they paint a very different picture of calm and unlikelihood of an invasion. And they regard the West as ramping up some of the concerns. Uh, are you concerned that actually there is a bit of that? There's, it suits people's political interests in the West to, to overstate the risk of a Russian invasion? <laughs> So I, I was going to agree entirely other than, until the, the bit about sort of political interests. I don't think that this is anything to do with the political interests of any individual uh, Western leader. But I do think that, unfortunately, um, part of modern competition between states is uh, information manoeuvre, as the military would call it. So sort of the, uh, owning the information uh, environment and... It, within that is a competition between information that is fact and disinformation to deceive and manipulate. Um, President Putin and his regime are absolute experts at disinformation campaigns. Um, there is, you know, they, the Russian MOD is releasing footage of uh, Russian armor apparently leaving the area when actually we know that it's heading in the opposite direction. I think that Western governments have a responsibility to their citizens in Ukraine to be very clear about the threat and to make sure that they take appropriate action, but also to call out what President Putin is up to. We're one of the reasons that the US declassified a false flag uh, operation was that they felt that by declassifying it and getting it out into the media, it denied that false flag operation opportunity to the Russians as a pretext for invasion. Yeah. So you know, make no mistake, your, your program is being used as part of the West's competition with Russia. That's the nature of 
modern warfare, I'm afraid. Are you scarred, um, not you personally, but the intelligence services and the, the administration by intelligence failures in Afghanistan? It's a big contrast, isn't it, that no one was predicting the fall of Kabul and it fell. Everyone is predicting the invasion of Ukraine and it hasn't happened yet. Um, no, I don't think so, because uh, maybe it helps if you're uh, an ex-soldier like me. You um, learn to read intelligence not as a... Uh, you know, as a statement of fact, this will happen. You read it as information that has come from different sources, some sources you choose to trust more than others. And over time, the more intelligence you read, the more that you sort of calibrate and triangulate. Um, I think that uh, it was, uh, there was probably an optimism bias in the summer about how long the Afghan National Army could hold off the Taliban. Uh, I don't know that that was a failure of intelligence. I think in many ways that was a failure of people like me wanting to read something different to what was actually on paper. Yeah. Uh, I think in this case, um, what we're seeing is not just um, you know, uh, reported opinion from people in country that you have to calibrate. There's so much imagery in open source and, of course, yeah. uh, classified that, um, that I think you... It's, it's pretty hard not to come to a judgment that, that this is meant. Uh, and that's why everybody is urgently encouraging that President Putin reverts to diplomacy rather than crossing the border. Mm -hmm.